The heroes of the program My Day in Kazakhstan are the foreign experts temporarily living in our country. They are better known under the term expats, as well as foreign ambassadors and volunteers. In other words, the idea from Kazakhstan with love is still at the forefront and sounded by foreigners who have linked their fate with our country, although for a short period. The program heroes talk about themselves, about what they do, how they live here, and why they chose Kazakhstan. The camera accompanies the heroes of the program from the early morning till a late evening. Hi, my name is uh, Tuya. Um, actually, my real name is Muhtuya, which is a Mongolian name. So welcome to my home. Let's have breakfast. So, actually my family always ends up waking earlier than me, so thanks for breakfast. <laughs> this is my husband. Uh, my husband's name is Bo. Uh, his, his real name is Berendt, so we have difficult names. Muhtuya and Berendt. He's, he's from the United States and I'm from Mongolia. I was born and raised in Mongolia. But I lived uh, a lot of my uh, life, uh, actually since age 17. Most of my time was spent in, uh, in the United States. Now we're in Kazakhstan. Pulani, she's five and a half. She's gonna be almost six years old, right, Polani? She eats cinnamon rolls. Tuya Altangarel lives in Astana with her family. This is her second year here. She works as a deputy permanent representative of the United Nations Development Program in Kazakhstan. Tuya received her education in the United States and Britain. Before joining the United Nations, she had previously worked for the World Bank. I'm going to show you some of Hulan's artwork. She started drawing recently, so uh, her coordination and you know basically her drawing skills is getting much, much better. And I guess this is a giant tree and a giant tulip. And the sun, and it's a bench. Yeah, that's cool. Those, that's a cloud? That's cool. It's three-dimensional, I think. So this is my urban garden. And look at this. Uh, we decided to grow some vegetables. It's actually just an experimentation to see if it's gonna grow or not, but uh, apparently it can grow. This is actually a lettuce. Look how it's growing really, really fast and long. We planted this just a month ago, a month and a half ago, and already it's growing so fast. And this is our cucumber. You can see that you, baby cucumbers coming out. You can see those little ones. And it's definitely fruiting very well. And this is watercress. It's another salad. So I'm going to uh, cut some salad leaves for dinner. Everything is growing really fast. And we get a lot of uh, sunlight, so that's why it's, it's, uh, it's actually, our balcony is very good for growing. I want to tell you that uh, all of this uh, was built uh, with the support and with the help of uh, our friends in Arnasai village. Uh, we're going to go to Arnasai village. It's part of our, my work, actually. Uh, we support this village through, through the United Nations uh, Development Program. And uh, so part of our project is to support uh, green economy, so-called green economy, meaning that uh, we can have employment, have jobs uh, by, for example, having organic urban agriculture. I think uh, our friend is supposed to come soon. Tatiana. Do you remember Tatiana, sweetie? <laughs> With doggy? Yeah, look! Look, let's go. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Melly. Hi, Melly. Tuya skillfully combines work with household chores and raising her daughter Hulan. She also finds time to spend with friends. Tatiana is a frequent guest in her home. The two women position themselves as helping and able with the rights and duties that are an integral part of friendship. I met Tuya uh, almost a year and a half ago uh, when she arrived uh, from uh, New York to Astana. And I knew from the first moment that we're going to be very good friends. Um, I'm from Greece, uh, two years is from Mongolia, and um, uh, despite the fact that, uh, you know, our countries are so far apart, uh, international people um, 
I usually they find proximity. So. Let's go to Hulani's room. She's okay. going to show you some acrobatics. Well, this is Hulani's room, and uh, she's going to show us some acrobatics. She loves to do climbing. So show us how you jump down. Okay, jump. Good. So she can do this all day and all night. Uh, she doesn't get tired. Even by watching her, I already get tired, but Lanyan never gets tired. Tuya really likes products made of natural felt. She has felt souvenirs made and bought in different places. She admires the work of folk artisans and craftsmen of Central Asia. Look at this uh, yurt. This is actually a Kyrgyz yurt, and it's also made out of felt, but I fell in love with it because I used to live in Kyrgyzstan, also working for the United Nations, and I go to this shop called Tumar quite a lot. And this is so cool because you can put some dolls, you can put stuff, and then it's like a uh, little storage facility. So, and I hope that we can uh, also make uh, such yurts in Kazakhstan because Kazakh yurts are really, really beautiful. And the interior decoration of the Kazakh yurts is spectacular. Meanwhile, Tuya's husband, Bo, is preparing for a patient admission. He's a doctor with an international experience. In New York's hospitals, he had to deal with patients who had borne serious diseases. According to Bo, acupuncture helps recover not only physically, but also mentally. This is a balance that I'm constantly uh, working out as a practitioner. Um, knowing as much as I can about traditional Western medicine, and translating that into my understanding of Chinese medicine and vice versa. The patient's here. Hi, come on in. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Patient's on the table, she's relaxing, having a good treatment. Now it's time for the doctor to relax, and I do that by playing some music. Uh, my preferred instrument is mandolin. I've been playing for about uh, 15 years. I've played in some musical groups in the United States, uh, mostly what we call bluegrass. It's like uh, American country music. So I think while I have a few minutes, I will sit down and play some music. So um, actually, uh, we moved uh, into this apartment about uh, six months ago. So when we first entered the apartment to look at this uh, place, the first thing I saw was the painting of New York City. So I got so excited and I felt like this apartment was for us because uh, we used to live in New York City for uh, over uh, seven years before we moved to Kazakhstan. Let me show you uh, a few things uh, that uh, I think are really interesting. Uh, actually, I wanna start with the pillows. They seem to be so, um, you know, unusual but they're also made from felt and it's produced by local artisans from Kazakhstan. And uh, this is actually produced by a young lady called uh, Tatiana. And she lives in a very small village called Glubokoya, uh, almost on the, at the border of uh, Russia and uh, East Kazakhstan. So she's uh, with our UNDP support and the government of Kazakhstan support. In her spare time, Tuya likes to go for a walk with her family or friends along the riverbank. And today is no exception. After all, the weather is great. So let's go down the stairs. Come on. I'm going to have to change my clothes and um, go to the village um, where my uh, organization has some projects. So I'm just going to you know, quickly change and I'll have to say goodbye to you guys. Bye, sweetie. Bye, guys. Okay. Hi, hi again. 
So I'm, I got all dressed, so we're going to go to a uh, quality school international, which is, uh, which is an American school in Astana. And I'm going to meet the kids there, and we're going to a village called Arnasai. A motorcade with children is heading to Akmal region. They are much awaited at the training center of the National Academy of Green Technologies and Practices. Here, a variety of unique projects in the field of energy and water-saving technologies, including greenhouses, is being implemented. The National Academy of Green Technologies and Practices has been opened in the village of Arnasai of Akmola region with support of the United Nations Development Program. I think the project is very interesting. So many people come here. I want to thank the local UNDP office. It is due to them that today we have the center striving to introduce green technologies in practice. So you can see that uh, here, um, this is our stand for uh, UNDP. Uh, it shows how different energy efficiency technologies were introduced in different settings. This is, this is actually one of the uh, teaching classes. Uh, we, 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 teach, uh, uh, we, we, we teach about green technologies with, uh, and share the experience with uh, other villages, with other schools uh, around Kazakhstan. So basically what the children are doing is to help each other give first aid uh, because we are out in the nature and uh, <laughs> so that's good. Yes, Dr. Hulan is very good. <laughs> so this, uh, this is one of the pilot sites. Uh, it was uh, funded by the European uh, Union, European Commission, and uh, it's uh, really experimenting to see whether or not uh, we can introduce some water-saving technologies uh, at a village uh, kind of setting. So for example, here uh, they have applied something called hydrogel. So it, the hydrogel uh, basically feeds one specific plant, so you don't have to waste a lot of water. Another equipment which is used on this site is uh, drip irrigation equipment. Um, it's very useful and convenient uh, equipment because it doesn't require a lot of money. Uh, the equipment costs uh, not so much, so even the local citizens can afford and install it in their gardens. So, uh, how it works? Uh, there is a, a pipe uh, which is connected to the uh, water pipe with some small holes. Um, and uh, every hole is very close to the plant itself, so the water uh, the water is given to the plants and, uh, and uh, it doesn't require a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of water. All the vegetables from this side, they go directly to the school canteen. So children can eat all these vegetables uh, during their lunch. Uh, the school does not uh, pay extra money for purchasing of vegetables and uh, parents and children and teachers, they know what their children eat. They smell really organic. I just wanted to introduce uh, you all uh, to His Excellency, Mr. Uh, Jagir Suke. He is uh, our ambassador of uh, Mongolia to Kazakhstan. I know he has been working a lot to strengthen uh, bilateral ties between our two countries, between Mongolia and Kazakhstan. And uh, personally, I have learned a lot about uh, Kazakh politics, culture and uh, traditions. I like this project. I heard that uh, UNDP in Kazakhstan is uh, carrying out such kind of project. Uh, this is, uh, I'm interested in this because this, first of all, this is uh, on the village level. Secondly, it's based on the school, mm -hmm. which educates the young generation for the green technology. This is uh, the very special room and uh, I'm actually very, very proud of this uh, project site. Uh, uh, we have an energy efficiency and energy uh, uh, lighting project and uh, with the support of the Global Environmental Facility uh, we installed these uh, so-called phytodiotic uh, lights and so these lights kind of replace, replace the sun and then you can grow uh, micro kind of greens, for example salad leaves, basil, uh, cress salad and different kinds of leaves and it's actually a very good business idea for restaurants. We had a very intense day and now finally uh, it's time for lunch. I'm so hungry. I have to eat some food with uh, 
the children. Let's go and eat. This was a very intense uh, field trip for us. It was very much fun. It's always fun when you have uh, lots of children around. So now uh, I'm going to work. Now here I am in the office and uh, I'm going to go to, to my office. It's on the fourth floor and uh, I'm going to have some important meetings uh, and uh, I want to welcome you to, to the UN House. So these are my colleagues. Tuya has an invaluable work experience at the international organization which has offices in more than 177 countries. The staff of the UNDP in Kazakhstan has many different projects and thus a busy work schedule. Tuya's colleagues appreciate and speak highly of Tuya's professional and personal skills. I've been working for the United Nations uh, uh, mostly through the United Nations uh, Development Program for over uh, 12 years now. Uh, I worked uh, in Tajikistan, I worked in Kyrgyzstan, and then I worked uh, in the headquarters um, in New York City. And now I'm here for about a year and a half, actually almost two years because the time flies so fast. And, um, and I'm going to be here uh, hopefully for the next uh, three years or so, and I'm going to enjoy my life uh, so much. These are our colleagues. We actually got some uh, shipment from East Kazakhstan and they're going to open it and then we're going to see it. Uh, I'm just going to introduce uh, my, my boss, uh, Nurimasa Shimamura. He's been here for six months now. <laughs> hey guys, hi. Okay. Yeah, have a, have a seat. Have a seat over here. Tuya has developed friendly relations with her colleagues, so quite often they have dinners together after long working hours. Chibrik is my favorite food actually, especially in this restaurant because it's so... Look at this. <laughs> it's very special and it's so huge. <laughs> so, despite my uh, efforts to diet, uh, I'm, always, I'm always eating the best tasting meat. <laughs> I love this uh, plov uh, and I like that, I know that it's real plov because it's got yellow carrots. So, and uh, yeah, I know definitely that it's uh, the original, the original kind. Yeah, and, and the manti is so great. So, you see, how can I be thin in, in Kazakhstan if I'm eating such great food all the time? In spite of the fact that she is a great manager and very well organized, she is also a very uh, intelligent lady and you can feel that she is very tender-hearted. Uh, thanks to her support, we, um, could, um, we have managed to implement a great project, project supporting rural women. Um, these ladies, uh, while being very talented, uh, they had no opportunities to uh, develop their skills further and to show their goods to the world. This was an ordinary day in the life of the extraordinary woman Tuya Altangarel. Good night, our heroine. We'll see you soon with another extraordinary person in the next episode of our show. Oh, today is uh, Friday evening, so I'm finally happy that uh, it's the, the weekend is starting tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to spending some time with my family, um, going to the swimming pool, um, and maybe going for long walks uh, with my husband and daughter. So uh, we had a very intense uh, day today, and I hope you really enjoyed uh, being with me and learning a little bit about what the United Nations uh, Development Program does in Kazakhstan and also 
I hope you enjoyed meeting my wonderful friends and my wonderful colleagues. So I'm just gonna go home now and relax and maybe take a bath with my daughter. So, all right, uh, take care. Good night, bye.